When I found Marietta, I didn't just find a place to go to college. I found so much more than that. I found friends. I found sports. I found my passion. I found family. I found my calling. I found a place to call home. Discover what you can find at Marietta by visiting marietta.edu today. Today on New Center 15, Ford Motor Company recalls. And a new antiviral pill from Pfizer. We'll have these stories and more. New Center 15, new starts now. Good afternoon and welcome to today's edition of News Center 15. I'm Kyla. And I'm Addison. Topping our news this afternoon. The Ford Motor Company is recalling some of its 2020 and 2021 Mustang Mach-E vehicles. The automaker said some of the windshields may not have properly bonded and could separate from the vehicle in a crash. About 18,000 vehicles are affected by the recall. Ford also announced that at least 13,000 Mach-E's are also being recalled for a similar bonding issue with the glass sunroof. Owners of affected vehicles are advised to visit their dealers for reinstallation free of charge. More, more information can be found on the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website. A new antiviral pill by Pfizer could fight COVID-19 early after diagnosis. Pfizer is now testing a drug which could possibly prevent symptoms and limit transmission to people in patients' household. There are at least three antivirals for COVID being tested in clinical trials. Results could come as soon as late fall or winter. The top contender is a medication from Merck and Company and Ridgeback Biotherapeutics. There is also one from Pfizer and another from Roche and Etia Pharmaceuticals. What's the weather like out there today? Here to provide a first look at the weather is Landon Santini. What can we expect, Landon? Uh, well, as, since the autumn season has officially started roughly this time next week, one thing we can definitely expect is temperatures to start cooling down from the warmer summer temperatures. Right now outside it feels like 73 degrees roughly thereabouts with cloudy conditions. The UV index says that it's uh, relatively low at two, which means the pollen count is low. The air quality is rather moderate, and that's very important if you have allergies to deal with. Winds are running around the southwest about five miles per hour with a 70% chance humidity. The sun uh, one another thing along with the decreasing temperatures is that the days, of course, naturally are going to get shorter and shorter. So the sun rose today roughly 720 in the morning and the sun's going to set a little bit beforehand uh, around 712 in the evening. Now, I'm really excited to be back and the autumn temperatures cooling things down a little bit will hopefully help make the coronavirus a lot easier for people in the Middle Ohio Valley and the world at large to deal with. And part of the cool down is that we're going to be feeling the effects of that as we continue on throughout the rest of the week. But I'll talk in more detail about that when I come back later on in the program for the five day forecast. So until then, it's great to be back and back to you guys at the desk. Republics and Republicans in, a, in the Senate stopped a bill that suspends the U U.S. debt limit and avoids a government shutdown. 
Monday's vote on the House passed bill was blocked in at the Senate by a 48 to 50 tally. Democrats need 10 Senate Republicans to advance the bill and Republicans have repeatedly said Democrats have to address the debt limit on their own. The blocking of the vote means congressional Democratic leaders now have to come up with an alternative plan. Government funding expires on Thursday and, and as of now, there has been no word of an alternative plan. United Airlines says nearly 99% of its employees have been vaccinated for COVID-19. The company last month announced that all 67,000 U.S. employees would be subject to a company-wide vaccine mandate. Now with just hours left before the deadline, United says it will begin the separation process as early as Tuesday for any of their workers that have not uploaded a record of at least one COVID-19 vaccine shot. Meanwhile, six United employees who sought religious or medical exemptions filed suit in federal court on the grounds they were being discriminated against. Following a deal, United employees who applied for religious or medical exemption requests will be allowed to remain active at the company at least until October 8th. That is when the court has scheduled a hearing in the lawsuit. Coming up, a marriage on the border and more. We'll be back after this. Hey, this is Kevin Love from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Right now, many of us feel anxious. Mindfulness can help you ease those feelings. My nonprofit is partnering with Headspace to offer free content to help you stress less. Head to kevinlovefund.org slash Headspace. Here's to the straggly ones, the first ones. But hey, I look good with this ones. The black, brown, red, and gray ones. The itchy ones. The ones grown by dad the ones grown for dad. The yeah, I nearly didn't do it this year ones, and the absolutely filthy ones. They all raise awareness, raise funds, start conversations, and save lives. Because whatever you grow will save a bro. Learn more at Movember.com. In Franklin County, New York, a couple said I do on the U.S.-Canada border. Six months ago, Karen Mahoney got engaged to Brian Ray, but due to COVID-19, the border is closed. Karen's mother, father, and grandmother all live in Canada, but that didn't stop this couple from holding their own ceremony so the bride's family could see her in her wedding dress and hear the vows. The official wedding is set for this weekend, and although Karen's parents and grandmother cannot attend, the makeshift wedding was just as special. A health clinic in Buffalo, Minnesota reopened Monday after a mass shooting that happened there nearly eight months ago. A medical assistant was killed and four other people were injured in the shooting. Employees were able to visit the clinic ahead of Monday's reopening. They've been working at four different locations since the shooting. The clinic is newly renovated with revamped security measures. More than $284,000 has been raised for the shooting victims and their families. A tragedy unfolding in Milwaukee where a pedestrian was struck and killed by another driver. Police say that the driver lost control of his car after being shot in the chest. 35-year-old Jamal Jones was helping a friend whose car had broken down in traffic with, on, with traffic on 60th Street just after a Sunday night. Witness, witnesses say he was on foot in or next to the, the median where a silver southbound car pro crossed into the wrong lane and struck him, hurling his body nearly 200 feet, killing him instantly before slamming into a landscaping truck. The circumstances leading up to the shooting and crash are under investigation. As so many Americans were dying of COVID-19 last year, it turns out they were also being murdered at a historical rate. Last year, the number of homicides in the United States jumped by nearly 30% according to a new FBI report. 
almost 5,000 more murders than the year before. It's the biggest jump in a single year ever recorded since tracking began in the 60s. The number spiked in the summer of 2020, the FBI report says, and then remained elevated for the rest of the year. There are many potential reasons for this jump, such as limited police presence following protests and gun violence. Coming up next, a man who tried to assassinate a U.S. president may be up for release. We'll also get the latest news from Hollywood. And although countrywide homicides have unfortunately gone up, our temperatures in the Mid-Ohio Valley will gradually be going down in the coming weeks. More details when I return for the five-day forecast. See you after the break. Where are we? We are at Marietta College. This, this is, is where we live, at Marietta Marietta. College. Have you heard of Battle of the Nibelungs? It's a main, <laughs> it's a main martial arts group in Europe for, for right-wing ex extremists, and German officials have twice banned it, but Battle of the Nibelungs still has an active presence on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And that's a problem at, at a time when social media sites are trying to cure the spread of online extremism. Right now, there are at least 64 Facebook profiles belonging to 39 entities of the German, the German government and civil society groups consider extremist. Information on this being shared with the Associated Press by the Counter Extremism Project, a nonprofit policy and advocacy group formed to combat extremism. What was on your gift list for your 15th birthday? Now 15-year-old Luciana Benetti didn't ask for a dog or a cat. Instead of a party, she got a pig. She says Chanchi, who weighs 45 pounds, is a loyal companion, even wants coming to her aid when she fainted. Meanwhile, a university teacher in Argentina shares her home with 28 sugar gliders. She says the pocket-sized marsupials create pure love for her, especially when they smother her with kisses. She calls her sugar gliders her engine of struggle and of life. A man who tried to assassinate President Ronald Reagan four decades ago can be released if he remains mentally stable. John, John, Hickin, John Hickinley Jr. was 25 when he attacked the president. Jurors found him not guilty by reason of insanity. Now he's 66 and, and he's been living in Williamsburg, Virginia. Doctors oversee his medication and therapy. He can't have a gun and he can't travel far without informing his doctors. Hickley's lawyer said, says he no longer poses a threat. U.S. District Court Judge Paul L. Friedman said Monday that he'll, be, he'll sign off the plan this week. Today in entertainment news, we've got Britney Spears, the Fresh, Prin <laughs> the Fresh Prince, and Fantastic Beasts. Here's Elijah Balick with that and more in the Hollywood Minute. What's going on in Hollywood, Eli? Thanks, guys. 
Here's your first look at Britney Spears versus the latest documentary about the pop star's long battle to end her conservatorship. The film debuts today on Netflix. We have a title and a new release date from the follow-up to Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Warner Brothers says the third film in the Harry Potter's prequel series, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore, will open April 15, 2022 three months earlier than previously announced. Summertime, the Grammy-winning win summer anthem from DJ Jazzy Jeff and The Fresh Prince is heading to the big screen. Deadline reports Will Smith is set to produce a hip-hop movie musical for Screen Gems based on a 30-year-old single. No word on the plot or whether The Fresh Prince himself or DJ Jazzy Jeff will appear on screen. With your Hollywood Minute, I'm Elijah Balick. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Elijah. It's time now to check back in with Landon Santini for our extended forecast. What do you have for us, Landon? Well, as I've been saying, uh, now that autumn has started, roughly a week ago, we've been experiencing the last of our summer temperatures, and they've been gradually going down and down from the lower 80s to the upper and then gradually mid 70s. But uh, we'll get to that in just a moment. Right now, let's take a look at the world map, not the world map, the uh, map of the United States of America, our lovely home country. And as you can see uh, in our little neck of the woods in the east in the northeastern region of the US, it's relatively calm. And that's a really good thing, especially with all of the trouble we've been having lately. As we zoom in closer to the uh, tri-state area of uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio and West Virginia, you can see, like I said, most of the world, it's relatively calm. Same thing when we look at the Mid Ohio Valley area, especially around our areas of Marietta and Parkersburg. At most, there's a slight bit of precipitation to the north, but nothing to be too concerned about. But as for tomorrow, those temperatures will kind of start tapering off. We'll continue having calm conditions with sunny conditions, a high of 75 and a low of 52. Going into Thursday, that'll go down a little bit more with more sunny conditions, a high of 73 and a low of 48. And we'll start the weekend with roughly the same temperatures, except a low of 46 this time. If we go further on into the weekend on Saturday, it'll start climbing up, not very much, but a little bit, with a high of 75, low of 48, and uh, partly cloudy conditions. So we're going to have some nice, good sunshine throughout most of the week. But then as we end, get as we get into the end of the weekend, around on uh, Sunday, we'll be experiencing a high of 73 and a low of 57 and part of that is because we'll also be having a 40 percent chance of some storms we have yet to determine whether or not that's going to be in the form of rain or thunderstorms or well it's a bit too early for hail so probably won't be that but when you when you're getting ready to go out to church on sunday with your family i highly recommend you at the very least get an umbrella unless of course you're staying at home which is an option now thanks to covid but We'll get through it together, and we'll all be here with you to deliver great news when we do that. And what better way to do that than just relax and watching some sports? We'll talk a little bit more about that after the break, and I'm looking forward to seeing what uh, action is in store. So until then, back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Landon. When we come back, Grant Moore will have the latest from the world of sports. Stay with us. James Brown and Bill Cower welcoming you back to the Midnight Snack Run. This is one tricky obstacle course. He's reaching, but he pushes it away. He's approaching a plate of iced cookies. He blows right by him. Oh, the fridge. Looks like he's headed for the soda. Wait, he jukes left, grabs the water bottle. Now he's just got to get out of there. Look what dropped from the sky. Don't do it, Dennis. That's the way you execute a Midnight Snack Run. Stand Up to Cancer and Rally want you to reduce your risk for cancer. Go to takeahealthystand.org. We are strong, we are resilient, and we will get through this together. But these are stressful times, and it's important to also practice good self-care. It's normal to feel overwhelmed, anxious, or afraid, but there is hope. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, stay in touch with your community, and know that you are not alone. Learn more at wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. We've always had villains to face. Bad guys to take down. But you... You are the most horrible of all. We're not here because we have to be. 
We're here because we've had enough of you. Every single one of us is mortal. But inside of us, we're all heroes. So stand up with us. Stand up to fight. Stand up to cancer. Visit StandUpToCancer.org to learn more. And now we're back with Grant Moore for a look at sports. Busy week in the world of sports, wasn't it, Grant? You're right, and I have the rundown. The Pioneers were in action this past weekend. Let's take a quick look back on what, how some of the teams did. Football traveled to Columbus to take on Capital Saturday and took a 37-7 win over the Crusaders. Men's soccer played Cheatham University. The team took a 2-1 win in a double overtime game. Men's tennis played Ohio Christian University and won their match 6-1. Women's tennis took a win over Ohio Christian as well with a score of 5-0. In other news, the top two teams in American League squared off when Tampa Bay visited Houston in a potential preview of the AL Championship Series. With a victory, the AL East Championship Rays clinch home field advantage through the AL playoffs. Tampa Bay is a franchise best 38 games over .500 and has equaled the 2008 AL Championship team with the most wins in the season. Houston has lost four straight, can wrap up the AL West title in a win, and a Seattle loss at home to Oakland. Jose Urquidy has won the last four decisions for the Astros. Michael Wacha starts for the Rays, who have won four in a row overall. Zach Wheeler pitches for the Philadelphia in the opener of the pivotal three-game series at Atlanta. Charlie Morton is on mound for the Braves, who lead the NL East by two and a half games over the Phillies with few days left in the season. Atlanta has led the division since August 15th and trying to win it for the fourth straight year. After leaving Atlanta, the Phillies finish the regular season with three games at Miami while the Braves close at home with three games at the Mets. With a makeup game versus Colorado possible on October 4th, if it's needed to decide the NL East. That's all for now. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Grant. Joining us now at the desk is Landon Santini for our last look at the weather. Uh, well, uh, to sum it up, yesterday and today are definitely going to be our warmest days of the week. But going on throughout the rest of the week, uh, we're going to stay more or less consistent with the temperatures with highs of the mid 70s, uh, ranging from 75 to 73. But then going on into the weekend, It'll start cooling down a little bit, mainly due to, in late Sunday, us getting a roughly 40% chance of precipitation of some kind. So not terribly much to report this week. It's going to be relatively calm, but you know, in our line of work, especially in this day and age, no news is good news. <laughs> yeah, uh, just sounds like a lot of cold mornings and hot afternoons. Uh, yeah, with, I mean, like with how warm the studio lights can be, the cooler temperatures will definitely be beneficial to us. <laughs> so I'm definitely looking forward to chatting with you guys some more and looking forward to seeing all of you in more editions of New Center 15 going on into the coming weeks. That's it for today's broadcast. For all of us here at WCMO TV, thank you for watching. We hope you'll join us Tuesdays and Thursdays at 12:30 and 6:30 for WCMO New Center 15. Merida College Broadcasting, see you next time. senior basketball player loves to spend time hanging out before class with her best friend and education major Shelby.
Shelby knows the best place to study is at the Kalaki Cafe, where she can compare notes with baseball player Ryan and get a great cup of coffee, too. In the off-season, Ryan tries his best when he's shooting hoops with broadcasting major Gage in the Dyson Bauto Recreation Center, home of Fenton Court. Gage, as producer at WCMO 15 News, runs the control room, where he shows the ropes to Mary, a junior volleyball player and advertising and public relations major. Mary loves to spend her free time drawing down at the Herman Fine Arts Center, where her sorority sister Madison majors in studio art.